my name is Menno Peters. I'm Principal Solution Architect at Silpoint Professional Services. And today I'm going to show you a few tricks to get the most out of the IdentiaQ debug pages. So I'll start this presentation with a problem statement. Why should you do this? And um, I will illustrate that problem with a couple of examples. Then I will show you some solution or the solutions for the problems that I present and give you some more examples on how to fix this or how to make your life as a developer much better. And I will conclude with a short summary and then um, leave you to ask your questions on the forums. So the IdentiaQ debug interface is a great tool for analyzing objects in IdentiaQ, for debugging, for troubleshooting, for looking at the objects that we're dealing with in identity management. But some of these objects are, are there in very, very large numbers. So they, um, they exist in hundreds, thousands, or tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of the same kind of object in Identity IQ. And if you want to look at a specific object or an object related to a specific user, it's going to take you browsing through many, many pages to to find the right object and to, to be able to look at it or delete it or manage it in whatever way you want. So it could be very hard to find. And in some cases, the objects only show in the overview page a handful of attributes. So it's difficult to identify the right object. So let's start with a couple of examples. If we're dealing with audit events, there could be huge amounts of these events. And in the overview page, all we see is an ID and a create and modified timestamp. So it's very difficult to identify the right audit event objects. And on top of that, we can only search for the ID and not for any other information that is in the audit events. It would be very useful if we could search for the action, the audit action, the account name, for example, or uh, the target, the, which is typically an identity or another object that we're dealing with, that we're acting upon, for which the audit event has been created. The source of the action, um, attribute names and values, or the host name on which um, the user was working, or IP address perhaps, or the host name on which the action was executed. Identity entitlements, they also exist in very large amounts. Every access right or role that a user has is represented as an identity entitlement. And even though the information shown for these identity entitlements is, well, sufficient, uh, we have I the ID, the identity that it belongs to, the application that it belongs to, an account name, a value, and some other information, it's still very hard to find the right object. It could take you scrolling through hundreds of pages to find the right object to inspect it or delete it, uh, get rid of it while uh, debugging. So what you would want to search for is not just the ID, but also the identity that it belongs to or the account name, the exact account name or the value that it represents on a certain application. And its attributes representing all the groups that exist in the different connected applications. We also, like the identity entitlements, have enough information to identify the object, but to find it is still difficult because, once again, we can only search for the ID. And what you want to search for is, for example, the attribute and the value, even more important, uh, or limited by the application that it belongs to and the type and perhaps the owner of the entitlement. So how can we fix this? How can we make the debug interface work better? Let's have, first of all, a look at the example for the visible columns. And in the demo that I'm going to show you, I'm going to introduce you to the managed attributes, how we can extend them, identities and work groups, and I'm going to look at audit events, how we can make the interface more useful. So now I'm going to switch to my, uh, to my demo environment and show you how that works. 
So you should be able to see my debug interface here and all this can be configured via the debug using the UI config object. UI config object, if I'm going to search for quote debug, you'll see entries that define the columns that will be shown in the debug interface for each of the ob objects. So there's a lot of these and on top of that we also have entries for search properties. So um, the entries starting with debug, then the object name and grid columns define the visible columns, and the entries starting with debug and ending with search properties define the properties that will be used in searching. So what we're now interested in are the ones um, for the visible columns. Let me move to another tab. If I look at an, a managed attribute, for example, we have plenty of information already, but I may want to extend this. If I just open one of these, you'll see there's more information. We can, for example, see whether it has been aggregated or um, we can see the last refresh date. That is not available in the object or I could extend it with any of the attributes that are here the description, group name, um, multilingual descriptions even, and any other attributes that are there. So if I would want to extend this, I could load uh, a piece of XML that just updates UI config. For that, I'm going to move to this editor and I have this managed attribute column definitions. Here you see an object with uh, an import action merge, meaning that I'm going to inject something into another object. And this is the UI config. And I'm just going to add or update an existing entry. In this case, update one. And I'm going to add a few more columns, like aggregated, the aggregation state, whether it has been aggregated or just collected via account aggregation. And I also want to add the last refresh date. Any of the columns that I'm going to add to this will be added at the end of the entry. And I'm going to show you the effects now. So I'm going to import this object, import another one and choose. And the one I wanted to import was this with the columns. So there we go, import. And I just need to refresh the interface. I'm just going to click here and you'll see I have a few additional columns, the aggregated, and I actually want that to be next to requested. And I have the last refresh, which I want to be between modified and created. So I just added uh, another column and I can now more easily identify the objects that I want to see. And I can do the same for audit events. If we look at audit events here, you'll see there's virtually nothing. So it's very hard to identify what each of the audit event represent. And let me import another XML file. And before I do so, um, I can show you quickly what it contains. So I'm going to add a whole lot of attributes like the target, account name, and uh, what's this here, the attribute name. So all kinds of useful information to identify what uh, the object represents. I'm going to open that and import and just refresh the screen here. And now you see the source, the action, the target, and if I scroll down, you'll see applications that it has been uh, used on or that is related to uh, object or account names, uh, attribute names if applicable, and the server host, client host, IP address, creation, and yeah, for audit events, modified should theoretically never be populated because it should not be tampered with. And um, I had one more example. The 
the uh, work item columns. First of all, let's have a look at the work items, what they look like without any changes. Item. Well, there's some information. We can update that. Oh, I added, I've already added it. I forgot to remove it. Um, so I have notification date and expiration date. I've added that to this definition. So you can extend the normal uh, things and update this in a very simple way by just editing the UI config. I'm now going back to my presentation. And yeah. So the um, visible columns, um, there's a couple of things you need to know. Um, any property can be displayed, so any aspect of the uh, of the object. We can even uh, reference uh, nested or referenced objects uh, using a dot notation. So if, uh, for example, an identity entitlement refers to an identity and the identity is referenced from that object, so we can use identity dot name to get the name of the identity or application dot name to get the name of the application that it relates to. If the object is not searchable or the attribute is not searchable, make sure to also not uh, mark it as sortable uh, in your definition, because if it uh, if it's searchable, it has uh, it has an index, and the same index is necessary for sorting. We can also use custom extended attributes. So if you have certain extended attributes that you would want to display for, for example, managed attributes, you can add them to your definition as well. Second thing is the set of searchable properties. So I'm going to show you a solution for that. And similar to the uh, columns, the visible columns, we can modify the UI config again. I showed you quickly. You have to look for entries that start with debug, then the object type name, and the search property, uh, search properties at the end. So for example, debug identity search properties. Any information that you, uh, that you change must be searchable, any attributes that you're using. You can e even use the extended attributes as long as they are marked as searchable. Uh, if there's an index, you can use them. If there is no definition for these objects, you can only search by the ID and the name of these objects. And if there's no name, then you only have the ID. So once again, I'm going to switch to my uh, demo environment and show you how this works. I'm going to introduce you to the audit events because we can now search only for uh, IDs. I'm going to look at the identity entitlements and work items once again. So switching to my demo environment again. For a work item, we can search for the name, for example, uh, and the name is actually the number. And we have some other information, um, well, like the requester, the owner, um, the type, all those things we can't just search for. So let me show you what the entry looks like. Um, work, uh, debug, work, work, work item search oh there's no entry that means i can only search for the name and the id cc i only have the grid columns defined and there is no work item work item uh, search properties so i need to import that to make it more useful i can now not search for example for uh, the requester so if i say james nothing shows up and I would want to extend this so I can go to work items uh, nope I don't have the XML bag but I can just go in here and uh, pick this one copy that 
and rename it to definition task definition removed and work item and now I have this name and let's see what kind of interesting attributes we have here so just um, I have the level well that's not so interesting but the target class could be interesting or the type let's do type uh, type is already there executor is not and I want to have the requester so I say requester dot name that's something I can add requester dot name and perhaps also the owner there's an owner so I can also add owner dot name owner dot name And now I can search for, for example, James Smith, who is the requester. And now I get results just by updating the URI config. I don't even need to reload this page. I can just perform a new search and you see you get all the results here. I have another example for the uh, managed attributes. That's a very good one. Oh, let me first show you what it's in, what is in there. Manage attributes, searchable attributes. So I want to search for the attribute value, attribute name, value, display name, and the application name. Here, import this and manage attribute. And now I can say, for example, I want all the managed attributes for my directory server, which is 389ds. And now I get all only the results for these objects. Now for these for this application. Or I can say I just want to get all the ones that are groups. And then I get across all the applications the one that are groups. Or I can now also search for the value. Um, so line printer group on some of the Unix servers. And there we have it. And that concludes my demo, and I'm switching back to my presentation. For a short summary, so what have we discussed here? For the visible columns and the searchable properties, we can update the UI config. For the visible columns, make sure to look for the debug, then the object name, grid columns entries, and the default is defined by the debug object grid columns and then um, if you want to add another entry you can create it by you by just copying an existing entry um, and replacing the object type name and then add you the columns as desired the searchable properties can be defined by uh, by an entry called debug and then the object type search properties and the default is just the ID or name uh, as a searchable attribute. And I would like to invite you to ask any questions if you have them on the forums and um, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.